Hey there, once again, YouTube. You guessed it, it is I, Ben Ferriolo in the flesh. Well, in the cyber flesh. First off, please use the parts section in the description box below if this video is too long for you or if you wish to skip to a part of it. And if you haven't already, please bookmark my website. A link is provided in the description box below, right under my email address. It can aid you in finding, accessing, and analyzing seismic and GPS deformation data. It teaches you about the seismic plots scientists use every day, and also contains hundreds upon hundreds of seismic plots and images pertaining to a great many seismic swarms and events. There are a lot of goodies on my website, and I'm still updating it, so check it out. Also, I just recently created a Facebook account. Simply search my name on Facebook, which is the name of my channel here on YouTube. Make sure you get my confusing last name right, though. I just made that Facebook account, so it'll be updated in time. The spectrogram stream shown here is of select seismic stations around the Big Island of Hawaii, most notably around Kilauea. In this video, I'm going to cover my most recent blog post on the May 15, 2019 DLP HFEs, Deep Long Period High Frequency Events, as I like to call them. If you have already read the entire blog post, you can skip most of this video. However, I do include the seismic audio to some of these events in this video, so make sure you use the parts section in the description box below to skip to the audio, again, if you've already seen this blog post. If you haven't already, sit back, grab a coffee or something, maybe an ice cream, and let's get to it. Remember the deep long period high frequency events that I have talked about many times before? Well, there has been quite a resurgence of those tremor-like events. Over nine of them struck between 37 kilometers and 46 kilometers in depth on May 15, 2019, off the coast of Pahala, Hawaii, down near the southern tip. That is the highest count of these events in any 24-hour period for Hawaii. I believe mass magma transport along the magma plume conduit is the culprit. However, let's check out the data. Here's the blog post on my seismic blog on my website, which was actually meant to be under my Hawaii blog under the seismic events menu, but oh well, it still works out. It's been a while since we've seen a true DOP HFE, deep long period high frequency event in Hawaii. I believe it occurred twice in the past two weeks or so, but today, May 15, 2019, these, oh, well, that's not today, obviously, that was yesterday, but you know what I mean. These events returned with a vengeance. Over nine of these strange deep seismic events struck between 37 kilometers and 46 kilometers in depth off the coast of Pahala, Hawaii, off the southern section of the Big Island of Hawaii. In this post, I will show you my theory as to what is causing these events. I will also show a great deal of seismic plots as well. If you haven't already, click the title of this post or read more to continue. Again, you can see a helicopter right there. Think most of what you see are service events? Well, guess again, my friend. First off, the map that you see here details the locations of any seismic station I will use in this post. You can see all four seismic stations I used are scattered all across the Big Island of Hawaii. This eliminates any thoughts as to these events being surface events. They are not surface events as proven by the following data, and I did circle the epicenter of May 15th to DLP HFEs. The second map that you see here shows the reported events by USGS. If you wish to go to the USGS earthquake map showing these reported events, then please click here, and I left a button right down there to click there. Usually USGS reports these strange seismic anomalies as quote-unquote other event, seeing that there is no other way to describe them. However, this time they are reporting them as regular earthquakes. They are not regular earthquakes by any standard. On May 15, 2019, the southern section of the Big Island of Hawaii saw large resurgence in these DLP HFEs, deep long period high frequency events. That name was not dubbed by a professional, but by myself. The name basically details the main characteristics of these events. They are deep, usually occurring anywhere between 20 kilometers and 50 kilometers in depth. They are also carry a long period of time, with events lasting anywhere from 15 minutes to over an hour. Yeah, not any traditional earthquake, that is for sure. And they usually carry too high of a frequency range to be labeled as low frequency events, therefore showing these events do carry higher frequencies than what we sh what should we should see. Excuse me. These events are very peculiar, and ever since I discovered them, I have been fascinated by them. I have never witnessed them anywhere else in the world except for Hawaii, and I've analyzed a great deal of seismic data in the one year or so I have been conducting monitoring of volcanoes. Don't forget that past data for the past 20 years or more is available through IRIS. I have also talked about these events a great many times both on my YouTube channel and on my Hawaii blog here on my website, where this blog post was supposed to be posted. May 15, 2019 saw the highest count of these DOP HFEs in one 24-hour period. Over nine of these struck Hawaii today. Well, yesterday. 
although their amplitudes were quite small, showing energy being released is likely around a magnitude 1.8 to 2.4 earthquake, their seismic waves traversed huge amounts of land. How is that possible with how low the amplitudes were? It all has to do with the depth and the direction the main force of these events were headed. I currently believe these events are significant in that they are showing us mass magma transport along the mantle plume conduit. Much of the time, volcanoes are created by two tectonic plates grinding, with one subsiding under the other. That is why many volcanoes are located along subduction zones worldwide, the west coast of the USA being one example. However, Hawaii volcanoes are caused by a mantle plume, a volcanic hotspot from the mantle into the upper crust. Yellowstone supervolcano in Wyoming is a mantle plume hotspot, for example. This allows large amounts of magma, also known as lava once it is on the surface, to reach the surface and create volcanic eruptions. In my opinion, Mantaplume hotspots are more dangerous and far more unpredictable than their counterparts caused by tectonic activity. These DOP HFEs are showing us mass magma transport along that same conduit. At least that is my take on all of these events that I'm about to show, and the data seems to support it for now. Any additional information on proving or disproving this theory would be highly acceptable. Please comment below or shoot me an email. Now. This image right here, here's an example of the depth of the crust and upper mantle in Hawaii, credit USGS Volcanoes. Remember, the most shallow event of the events that occurred today, or yesterday, was reportedly 37 kilometers, right? 22 miles. You can see that is much deeper than what is shown on this image, showing that they are occurring pretty deep within the mantle, likely in the mantle plume. So we can see that the DLP HFEs are occurring within the mantle. The location and depth, along with the characteristics of the events, seem to indicate mass magma transport along the mantle plume conduit. However, the Kilauea summit is barely seeing any uplift right now. The east rift zone of Kilauea, most notably the middle and lower portions, are the parts seeing the most intense inflation uplift. This is obviously being caused by magma refilling for the next eruption, no doubt about it. Seismic activity is drastically lower in these areas than what we should see during this amount of inflation. Why is that? Feel free to let me know below. Because personally, I have no idea why seismic activity is so low compared to how intense uplift is. Also, Mauna Loa is still seeing continued uplift as well and seems to be inflating slightly more since January 1st, 2019. So if these events are signaling mass magma transport at quite a deep depth within the mantle, I doubt the magma is heading to the Kilauea Summit Reservoir. These events could be showing magma traveling into either the Lurs slash Murs Reservoir or Mauna Loa's Reservoir. I'm still too inexperienced to determine that right now. Right here, I'm going to show the helicorder plots to the four stations labeled on the first map in this post. Remember, all data below is only from those four stations. I did this to eliminate any possibility of surface interference. You might think what you're seeing excuse me, is surface interference, but it is not. This is in slideshow format. Check this out. PPLD, which was the closest seismic station to these events. PLAD, which is on Mauna Loa's summit. Going forward. KKUD, which is all the way near Mauna Kea. And HEAD, which is right near Hualalai Volcano. Yeah, you, you can tell, guys. Those are not surface events. Because surface events do not traverse miles and miles and miles and miles upon miles and miles. So... But look at that, guys. If we saw that at Yellowstone, people would be freaking out, huh? That would be very, very intriguing. Don't these events look dramatic? Well, they pretty much are. Again, amplitudes are quite low, but they traveled quite far due to their depths. Sometimes these events seem to get shallower, and other times they seem to get deeper with time. Over nine of these events occurred on May 15, 2019, the highest count of these events in any given day. Magnitudes were not as large as the ones I first discovered in January 2019, but the quick and intense resurgence of these events seem to suggest volcanic activity is not over for the Big Island of Hawaii. Below, I will show my own custom plots to all nine events. I know I stated above that, quote-unquote, over nine events occurred. This is because I possibly missed one or two very tiny ones. However, to save on time, I will focus on nine of the main DLP HFEs, Deep Long Period High Frequency Events. In the beginning of each event, I will show the waves, seismogram plots, proving what I am showing is not surface interference. Surface events cannot traverse the entire Big Island of Hawaii. Only when pigs fly can that be possible. Seriously, let me know what you think. Now each event will have its own section below. All times on all plots are in UTC, and all three plot images are in slideshow format. 
Also, don't forget to click here if you want to visit the USGS earthquake map showing events reported for these strange tremor-like events. Usually, USGS labels these as other event, but for some strange reason, they are only reporting them as earthquakes. You can compare the times on the USGS earthquake map to the times shown on the plots below. All plots were generated by myself using the program Swarm and Waves. Data was obtained through Iris Data Select. Event number four is the best of the day. So, let's get started. Here's the first DOPHFE of May 15, 2019 in Hawaii. Event number one started at 5.54 UTC and lasted approximately 25 minutes. You can see the main burst in energy showed on all four seismic stations. And down here we have the plots and slideshow format. Here's PPLD, which is the closest seismic station to these events. Notice, you can see it right there going forward. Notice, and some of the lower frequencies of these DOPHFEs are gone from Mauna Loa. For some reason, PLAD on Mauna Loa is not showing the low frequency energy of these events, but you could tell while going through these, you could tell it saw the same exact event. And remember, compare the times because some of the plots are a little more spread out than others, so it might make them look different, but really they're not. The increases of energy correlate perfectly, just like it shows up here. Going down, event number two. Event number two started at 6.33 UTC and lasted approximately 28 minutes. You can see, showed up. PPLD shows more of an emergent event with a lot more high frequency spikes, whereas this event seems to be showing more of the tremor event on uh, all the other three stations. For some reason, PPLD shows a lot of high frequency energy for some weird reason, and you can see that right down here. Let's scroll over to PPLD. See, you can see those high frequency spikes. That's why I do not call these low frequency events. They cannot be labeled low frequency events. They're deep. They last a long time long period and they are high frequency events sometimes going all the way up to 25 hertz or so but the main energy usually rests between 10 hertz and 2 hertz going forward here's PLAD and Mauna Loa you can see the same event right here notice the same exact event and here's KKUD near Mauna Kea you can see it shows the same exact event at the same exact times basically HUAD near Hualalai Volcano event number three Event number three started at 8.27 UTC and lasted approximately 23 minutes. Don't know what happened at Mauna Loa right here with PLAD. Something weird happened, but you can see the increases of energy correlate on all four seismic stations. Here's PPLD, the closest seismic station, which shows more of the higher frequency energy. PLAD, look at this. Barely showed any low frequency energy at all. Isn't that weird? Look, it didn't start in to increase until about 5, 6 hertz. That is strange. But we already know that this is a real seismic event. You can see it on all four stations across the big island of Hawaii. Event number four is by far the best DOPHFE of May 15, 2019. This was the strongest one again. Event number four started at 9.07 UTC and lasted approximately 23 minutes. Look at that, guys. And doesn't that kind of look like a steamboat eruption? In my opinion, it kind of obviously the process is totally different. It has nothing to do with the steamboat eruption because Steamboat eruptions are showing us the surface vibrations from the hydrothermal eruption. This is most likely showing us mass magma transport between anywhere from 20 kilometers to 50 kilometers in depth. So it's definitely not a steamboat eruption. We know that. Going down here are the plots of the largest one to occur on May 15th. I, again, cut the amplitudes for a lot of the plots for PPLD because the spikes went so far up that you really could not see the emergent tremor-like event in the center, which you could see here. Main frequencies of the largest event are right between, I'm going to say, 7 hertz and 10 hertz. Going over, here's PLAD at Mauna Loa. Again, this is event number four, the strongest one. You can see it correlates quite well with all surrounding stations. Notice that? Perfect. All right, well, here's event number five. Event number five started at 1021 UTC and lasted approximately 22 minutes. It was kind of a smaller one, guys. It's kind of smaller. Let's go over. Here's PPLD, the closest seismic station. You can tell it is another DOPHFE. Same obvious characteristics. Uh, let's see. Frequencies end at about 10 hertz right there on the closest station. PLAD shows that the frequencies spike at about 13 hertz. That doesn't even make any sense. Isn't that weird how the frequencies are propagating away from the source? I have no idea why that is. It is very strange. It's almost like every single station detects these events on the big island obviously every single station 
but every single station detects it a little bit differently, which is weird. I've never seen this different of characteristics before on multiple stations across the Big Island of Hawaii. It's very weird. Here's KKUD near Mauna Kea. You can see it barely showed it right there, but it showed it nonetheless. HUAD near Hualalai, event number six. Event number six started at 11.41 UTC and lasted about 19 minutes. You can see the increases of energy correlate on all four seismic stations. Going down, let's go to PPLD. Here's PPLD. Notice it shows the event, normal DLP HFE. As you can see, a lot of these events are made up of earthquakes. Yes, a bunch of little tiny microquakes occurring in a very rapid succession. But you can also tell there is a background tremor associated with those earthquakes. The earthquakes and the tremor put together is what creates the DLP HFEs and what they look like and how they propagate away from their source. PLAD and Mauna Loa, again, not showing any low frequency energy, which is odd. But KKUD, which is farther north than PLAD, is showing the low frequency energy from these events, which is very weird. So something might just be wrong with PLAD, that station. So I don't know. Here's HUAD and Hualalai. Now, here is event, let's see, this was event six, right? Yep. Here is event number seven. Event number seven started at about 1626 UTC and lasted approximately 37 minutes. You can obviously tell they correlate perfectly with all surrounding seismic stations. Here is, let me go back. Here's PPLD. Again, I cut the amplitude just a little bit just so we could see the background tremor. Notice all of these are earthquakes, guys. All of these little tiny spikes everywhere are little teeny tiny earthquakes occurring because of the rock breaking away from the magma transport. And the tremor, the subsequent tremor, is being caused by the magma itself. However, I am unsure why it is not low frequency tremor. Usually, magma transport creating tremor causes low frequency harmonic or volcanic tremor, right? That's what harmonic volcanic tremor is. Then how come the frequencies are so high? Mainly around 10 hertz. And I'm just, I'm using the baseline from the closest seismic station to these events because that'll eliminate any errors. For, for example, if I use PLAD from Mauna Loa, it would not give me as good of a baseline because it's farther away and PLAD is all screwed up for some weird reason. See, it's still not showing any low frequency energy, which is very weird, but it is showing a little bit lower frequencies than we saw on the other events. Again, this is PLAD and Mauna Loa. Going forward, here's Seismic Station KKUD and Mauna Kea showing the same event. And HUED near Hualalai, again, showing the same event. Again, their increases of energy correlate perfectly with one another, proving they are real seismic events, not surface events. Even though they look like surface events. <laughs> event number eight. Event number eight started at 2057 UTC and lasted approximately 36 minutes. I think possibly this was the longest one. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Yeah, event number eight, I believe, was the longest. Notice here. Increase of energy show perfectly on surrounding seismic stations. PLAD isn't shown well right here, but you can barely kind of see an increase because of this spike. Oh, I hate those spikes. Going back. Here's PPLD, the closest seismic station. Again, amplitudes have been somewhat cut to draw out the background tremor. Notice again, multiple, multiple, multiple earthquakes occurring in such rapid succession uh, that uh, you basically cannot tell them apart, including a background tremor, which usually peaks at about 10 hertz, near on stations near the epicenter and here's PLAD showing the same exact event at Mauna Loa and here's KKUD and Mauna Kea showing the same exact event increases in energy do correlate on other seismic stations showing they are real events HUAD at Hualalai forget this spike I believe that is an electronic issue that does not look like any real seismic event and here is event number nine now although these seem to be just earthquakes just for this one event the data can assure you this is another DLP HFE. The earthquakes seem to last longer than normal, and the normal background tremor is still present, just like all other DLP HFEs. Except for some reason, others during this day do not show such pronounced earthquakes. Event number 9 started at 2240 UTC and lasted approximately 32 minutes. You could tell this is another DLP HFE, but the earthquakes lasted quite long. Look at how many minutes few minutes, a good few minutes, guys. 2245, 2242, yeah. Very interesting earthquakes. Let's go all the way to PPLD. Okay, you can see the earthquakes here. Obviously, these are earthquakes. All the DLP HFE events are made of real earthquakes, yes. But usually, the background tremor seems to be a little bit stronger than the earthquakes themselves, making it look like a very exotic event. This one, 
seems to have the earthquake at a much higher strength than the background tremor at all. Again, we see the peak at about 7 hertz, and it goes down at about 12 hertz, a little bit higher than the other DOP HFEs on this day. Very interesting nonetheless. Go to PLAD and Mauna Loa, again showing these events and the background tremor as well. Going forward, here's KKUD and Mauna Kea showing those earthquake events and the background tremor as well. Going over to Hualalai Volcano, again showing those events, background tremor as well. They all correlate on surrounding seismic stations. As you can see, these events are very real and likely show mass magma transport along the Manso Plume Conduit that feeds the volcanoes on the Big Island of Hawaii. Why are these just occurring now? Why is 2019 basically the only year to see these DLP HFEs? If anyone has any information on these events that have been spotted in other locations or have been spotted prior to the year 2019, please comment below or shoot me an email. Seismic audio of these events will be uploaded when my video on this post is complete. Woohoo! Which is this video right here. Okay, so now that all of that is done, let me show you the seismic audio. I will pick two random events from the nine events reported on my blog post. I will use event number four, which was the largest event of May 15th, and I will also use event number nine, which seems to be more earthquake oriented, if you know what I mean. The following audio is for event number four. I highly suggest that you use headphones for this audio, but be wary of the volume. This is 24 minutes of seismic data compressed into about 20 seconds. Check it out. So that is very interesting. It almost sounds like a landslide, although we know that's not the case with these events. On May 15th, they occurred between 37 kilometers and 46 kilometers in depth. What you heard could very possibly be large amounts of magma either ascending or descending along the mantle plume conduit that feeds volcanoes in Hawaii. Pretty cool, huh? The last audio here I will show is for event number 9. Again, headphones are suggested, but be wary of the volume. This is 29 minutes of data compressed into about 24 seconds. As seen on the plots in the following audio, subsequent tremor was still observed during event number 9. However, more spikes of activity, likely earthquakes, started event number 9 and was more composed of it than the background tremor, sort of deviating from the normal characteristics of DOP HFEs. So why do you think Hawaii has seen such a stark increase of DLP HFEs lately? Do you think that I'm right that it is signaling mass magma transport along the magma plume conduit? Please let me know below. Over 9 of those events struck in one day, the highest count for any 24 hour period. That is pretty interesting. If you live on the big island of Hawaii, please keep in mind current deformations suggest that eruptions could begin at any time. The Hawaii Volcano Observatory is correct in many things that they state to the public. However, as shown in my recent video about Hawaii, the one that I did right before this couple videos ago, I believe, their statement that deformation is minimal is not true, in my opinion. Uplift, also known as inflation, seems to be somewhat substantial in the middle and lower portions of Kilauea's East Rift Zone, most notably the lower portion, which is farthest east, kind of near where the fissures erupted in 2018. Also, the Kilauea summit is not seeing much inflation, but Mauna Loa sure is. There seems to have been neither uplift or subsidence for a few months after the Kilauea eruptions calmed. However, since January 1st, 2019, uplift has continued possibly at a greater rate than seen beforehand. I will continue to keep an eye on the situation, but if you live on the big island of Hawaii, you really need to have a go bag ready just in case. Seriously though. People thought the 2018 eruptions would never happen, but they did. The fissures sprouted underneath people's houses within a day or two of the magma shifting. Please let the 2018 Kilauea and Lower East Rift Zone eruptions teach us that magma is extremely powerful and extremely independent. If you think you live nowhere near a volcanic hazard area, that's cool. However, know someday, somewhere down the line, it is possible a, volcan a volcano excuse me, could sprout near you. Magma does what it wants and again is extremely powerful. 
Join me in monitoring for such activity. I hope you all had a great day and God bless. Remember, the truth is considered hate or fear to those who hate or fear the truth. See you later.